Hi, everyone. Hi. Thank you all for being here. We are glad to have this opportunity to share our experience on elastic scheduling with TaiKV during the next 30 minutes. First of all, let us introduce ourselves. I'm Yu Tong, an infrastructure engineer at PinCap. Also, I'm the tech leader of the scheduling special interest group of TaiKV. I'm Song Gao, an infrastructure engineer at PinCap. I'm the maintainer of Chaos Mesh and the committer of TaiKV SIG scheduling. Yes. Uh, we are working on the scheduling system for TaiKV. Okay, let us take a look at the agenda of this talk. There are five parts covered for this topic. An introduction to TaiKV, the elastic scheduling background, the implementation in TaiKV on Kubernetes, some future work we are working on. And there will be time for questions at the end of the presentation. I would talk about part one and part two, and Song Gao will work you through the part three and part four. Before we dive deep into the details about elastic scheduling, you might need some background information about the TIE TV. So what's a TaiKV? TaiKV is a key value database and it is open source distributed and support transactions. TaiKV is a CMSF graduate project currently. With the great support from the community of, and the users, TaiKV now has more than 8,000 GitHub stars and more than 200 contributors. Now we are going to take a look at the TaiKV architecture. Each TaiKV node store different data shard named regions, which are divided by range. For a single region, it has multiple replicas we call raft group. It is used to guarantee high availability through the RAPT algorithm. And each group has its own RAPT leader and other followers. TaiKV client use gRPC to communicate with each TaiKV node, as well as placement driver, the cluster manager of TaiKV. And TaiKV will send the heartbeat periodically to the placement driver which is short for PD, to update the information about itself. PD periodically check replication constraint to balance load and the data automatically across node and the regions. And how does PD balance load and the data? PD will collect TaiKV statistic containing TaiKV heartbeat to help make a scheduling decision. Before we come to the next part, it is better to know how TaiKV migrate a region through the raft algorithm. Let's take a look at an example. We have three nodes and three region here. Each region has three peers which are located on node A, B, and C. We use the board border to mark the leader. Consider that we add a new node to the cluster. PD has a scheduling decision, which are going to migrate a peer from the high load node A to the newly added node B. We will show the detailed process in the next few slides. Assume it selects region 1 as a source region and a node D as the target node. 
PD will first get the whole scheduling steps and combine them into a command and send it to TyKB. The first step of this command is to add a new replica in node D. Since region one is a leader, we need to transfer the leader before going on. So the next step is to transfer the region's leader. After the leader is transferred, PD will execute the next step to let TyQV remove the replica on node A. When the above three steps are done, now the region has three replica, which are located on node B, C, and D. That's how PD migrate region. Now, uh, let's move on to the elastic scheduling in TyKB. Another question, what is elastic scheduling? Briefly speaking, elastic scheduling is auto-scaling depending on the workloads. When the TyKB cluster is deployed, normally the scale, scaling of TyKB cluster is able to handle the average load. But sometimes the workload will become larger, which requires operator to manually scale out the TyKB cluster to handle the workloads. When the heavy workloads get lower, the operator also needs to manually skew in the TyQV cluster to save the resource and the cost. The elastic scheduling makes the whole process automatic. So why do we need or choose the elastic scheduling? Here are three reasons. First, elastic scheduling could handle the unexpected traffic automatically. Nowadays, we live in a world with a huge amount of information, and the breaking news always appear with no prediction. Here is the statistic about the storage QPS for the operator about its business. As you can see, most of the time, the QPS for the storage layer stays low and suddenly become larger at some point. After a short period of time, the QPS fall back to low level again. The changing curve shows that it is difficult for the operator to manually manage the storage layer because the traffic is unexpected. Second, elastic scheduling could help us save the resource when we don't need it. As the traffic is unexpected and the operator need, to, need the ability to handle the heavy workload, they have to pay the, the cost for actual resource. But most of the time, these resources are wasted. If the story has the ability of elastic scheduling, the resource could be released when the workload become low. Finally, the cloud infrastructure has already become virtual nowadays, and the elastic scheduling can benefit from it. As the cloud infrastructure provides on-demand availability of computing resources, the elastic scheduling could apply for resource from the deep cloud infra when they need it and release the resource at its own pace. Moreover, as, a, as, Kube, as the Kubernetes hub has provided the powerful API to manage container and resources on cluster, it is more convenient to manage the stable, stateful application like distributed the database. For now, we have introduced the background of TyKV and the elastic scheduling. 
We also discussed why we need or choose the elastic scheduling for the storage layer. Now we will have Song Gao introduce the implementation in Thai TV. Okay, thanks, Yu Tong. I'd like to move on to the introduction of how Thai TV scheduling builds its, elast its elastic scheduling management mechanism based on these solutions. First, an introduction about the elastic scheduling architecture on Thai KV. The architecture is composed of four components. First, the Thai KV cluster exposes it, its metrics of its status according to the workloads. Second, the monitoring system like Prometheus will collect these metrics. The scheduling system, which is called PD here, will fetch the metrics from the monitoring system and calculate the auto scaling plan, which is exposed by the API. Finally, the operator system will take the auto scaling plan provided by the PD and scale the TechEV cluster. Now, we will explain how this architecture works by two parts, the operator side and the scheduling side. We use operator pattern, a famous method of packaging, deploying and managing the uh, Kubernetes application. It is basically composed of two components, the controller and the custom resource definition, which is also called CRD. We use CRD here as the elastic scheduling configuration for users. After the configuration file is deployed into the cluster, the, schedule, the controller will start to check the configuration fire periodically and carry the auto scaling plant from the PD. As the operator manage the TechV cluster on the Kubernetes, after the operator get the scaling plan from the PD, the operator will start to scaling the TechV cluster according to the plan. On the scheduling side, the PD meaning do two things. First, fetch the metrics from Prometheus as TechAV has exposed many metrics in lots of dimensions. The PD could use this information and calculate the proper auto scaling plan for the operator. The second thing for scheduling is to decide the scheduling strategy in this elastic scheduling situation. Before we introduce this specific strategy for this situation, we can imagine that what if the PD take the newly created elastic type AV as a normal node, like normally scaling out, as PD would balance the data distribution between each type AV, it will transfer lots of regions to the newly created type AV. As the data transferring, need cost system resources and also could cause latency, the default balancing scheduling strategy couldn't work very well for the scheduling, elastic scheduling. To solve this problem, the PD would only transfer the regions which is under high frequent visiting or updating and their located type AV should be under high load. We call these regions as hot regions. So how do PD only migrate the hot regions to the elastic scaling type AV node? Before we answer this question, we need to know how we recognize the hot region. PD will record the read and the write flow of each region and stores. Each store will maintain a top end cache to save the most hot region in this store. If a region is beyond a predefined threshold and continuously hits the cache, 
we think this is a hot region. With this information, the hot region scheduler in PD will decide if migrating the region can make this tag KV more balanced. Since we have known about how PD recognizes the hot region, once the hot region is selected, the right thing is to find a way to only migrate it to the new lake scaling node. Tag KV supports using some predefined label to manage the data placement. So we can utilize this mechanism. Actually, PD has many kinds of schedulers working at the same time besides the hot reading scheduler. When these schedulers start to schedule, we usually use some filters to filter the store which don't want it to be a source or target according to each scheduler's rule. And thus, we can create a new label for newly scaling nodes. The label consists of key value pairs. The key of the label is special use and the value is hot region. When the node is scaled out, the label will be added by the operator automatically. PD will get this information once the new link scaling node sends its heartbeat. For other schedulers such as balance regions, before we create them, we add a label filter which will use this new label to it. This filter will prevent the store being selected as target. For example, we only allow the hot reading scheduler to select the store one as the target. The rest scheduler cannot. Here is an example of how elastic scheduling configuration looks like. As you can see here, the configuration points out the necessary factor and the params the PD needed during the calculation, during calculation the auto scaling plan. We can also define some concentrates here in order to limit the total counts of scaling type AV nodes. As the configuration is managed by custom resources in Kubernetes, after the configuration is deployed, the elastic scheduling will start working. Now, we will show the experiment result about the elastic scheduling on TIKV. In this experiment, we will use TIDB, an open source distributed database which used TIKV as storage layer and run the sysbench a famous benchmark tool to show how elastic scheduling work during the heavy workloads. This graph shows the relationship between the regions and the type KV. The column indicates the status for the dedicated type KV, and the rows show that the region and its replication in each type KV. The blue rectangle represents a follow-up here for the region, and the, the red rectangle represents the leader for this region. As the TIKV cluster is consuming lots of CPU resources during benchmark, the elastic scheduling starts to deploy two new TIKV automatically. At the beginning of the elastic TIKV is created, there are no regions being scheduled to the elastic scheduling TIKV. So we can see the sysbench result didn't change yet. After the PD transferring some hot regions to elastic TIKV nodes, as you can see, there already exists some red rectangles under the elastic TIKV's column. Now, we can find that both the TPS and the QPS of suspension have increased 
the whole process should that the elastic scheduling automatically detect the workloads and the scaling the cluster to improve the performance. In addition, we are going to support more features with elastic scheduling in the future. Here are some ideas. The first is to dynamically increase the read-only replicas according to workloads. As we know, TIKV only can read data from the region's leader in the earlier version. But now we support follower read, and thus we can read data from followers also. When the read pressure is high, it will increase the read-only replicas automatically, which can greatly help us reduce the read pressure. When the read pressure becomes low, it will switch back to the original state. The second is in some seniors, there is some data which is barely accessed. It's better to move this kind of data to the cheaper storage in order to save the cost. Combined with elastic scheduling, we can make the cluster recognize this kind of data automatically and decide to scale out the cheaper storage and scale in the highly paid storage. This is basically everything we want to cover in this talk. Thank you very much for attending. If you are interested in what we are doing, you are welcome to join us. If you have any questions regarding what we have talked, please ask. Thank you very much.